Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna to go and review the Intel Integrated HD 4600. Man, that is a really damn long name and also the title doesn't sound all that badass. Couldn't Intel go with some kind of name that Nvidia has kind of like the GTX series, but they call it something like the GSOFP. You know, something like that, I don't know. I try to make sense, but I kind of failed dra dramatically. It was, it was kind of bullshit. So basically I'm very sick, so that's why I sound a little bit off. I'm gonna try to be a little bit funny to keep up that smiley face but it's probably not gonna happen because I'm just really sick. I'm pretty fucked up right now. So I'm also leaving Hawaii, made about three videos ahead of my schedule so that I can keep up to date with my YouTube channel until I unbox the Nintendo Switch and then from there on, we'll see what we're gonna do next. I'm still thinking of some future projects that I'm gonna do for the YouTube channel. And guys, I'd appreciate if you comment down below, let me know different things related to the video because it would be kind of cool to communicate because what's the point of having all these subscribers if I can't actually communicate with you guys? So yeah, there's the point. So let's go ahead and start with the review. First, before we actually show some of the benchmarks in games, I'm gonna let you guys know that if you don't overclock your HD 4600 to 1.5 gigahertz, especially with the Core i3, you're not gonna get a great experience. The frame rate's always gonna be consistent under 30 frames per second. So it's gonna be like 24, 25 frames per second. Now, if you overclock it for 1.5 gigahertz, I mean 1.1 gigahertz, which is the default stock to 1.5 gigahertz, you're gonna get a solid 30 frames per second. Some games like Battlefield 4 is gonna run at 60 FPS. Yes, I am damn straight. It's gonna run 60. Now, it won't be a stable 60. It's gonna look like shit. It's gonna look like the Xbox 360, but it's gonna be playable. So first, starting off with Far Cry 3, which is one of my favorite games Personally, my personal opinion, one of my favorite games, the best game of all time, Far Cry 3, running at around 30 FPS high settings. Now, there are a few dips when things should start to explode and shit happens in the game. You're going to drop to about 20 FPS. Now, if you want that consistent 30 FPS with overclocked HD 4600 to 1.5 gigahertz, you're going to want to play on medium settings. And it's never going to drop a frame below, no matter how much shit blows up on the map. You could probably set C4s, maybe add a mod where you could plant more than three C4s and blow the shit up out of everything. It's not going to drop a frame below 30, which is amazing. Now, if I underclock it to 1.1 gigahertz, it's going to be 20 FPS even on low settings. So it's complete shit. If it's underclocked it's also very well optimized so you shouldn't have a problem you know playing some of the latest and greatest games except for far cry 4 which plays like shit it's like 14 fps even if you overclock it's not going to change because of, you know optimization shit it runs better on the xbox 360 than the 4600 even though the 4600 is a lot more powerful so looking at battlefield 4 battlefield 4 is running a hell of a lot better than far cry 3 because it's you know a less intensive game it's around 60 fps i think at like 1024 by 7 something or i think 480p or some shit no but it's a really low resolution it's like 600p or something like that it's really shit and it plays really horribly it looks like the xbox 360 no offense xbox 360 had some really great games and they looked pretty good at the time but right now they actually kind of look like shit because we have all those 4k tvs and stuff so battlefield 4 with the lowest possible settings you're going to get around 60 frames per second on the lowest preset and you could go to medium, play around 30 FPS, and maybe go up to 720p, and it would look similar to the Xbox One, but you know, with a 30 FPS instead of 60. So the Xbox One is still more powerful than the HD 4600, but if you just have no absolute choice and you're waiting for your GTX card, which guys, I recommend you just go ahead and buy yourself a dedicated graphics card instead of using the integrated. But if you have no choice, then I guess if you could play, you know, at 30 FPS, most next gen games or whatever, then Intel HD 4600 is probably gonna be for you if you overclock it. If you don't overclock it, it's gonna play like complete shit and it's just a throwaway. Go ahead and get yourself a dedicated GPU and problem solved. So that is gonna be it for my review. Only two video games. I don't have a lot of time because I have to leave to the airport in about a couple of hours. So yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Nintendo Switch unboxing. Subscribe, comment down below, like the video, dislike, and I'll see you all next time.